So a few weeks ago, I made a video about the election that I haven't released yet. And I'm about to share that with you. But I wanted to tell you, and I'm just saying it was a few weeks ago to give you that disclaimer, and to tell you that I'm eating ice cream. Yeah, nice innocent plug. It says it's limited edition, but at this point, you know, it's the election. We gotta do something to cope. Politics is not something I will talk much about. But this is one time I will talk about it briefly. Concerning this election coming up here in 2024. We have yet once again been given two candidates, and that's pretty much it, according to the news. Now, if you look at practice ballots and who's going to be on the ballot, you got about five names on there, not just two. But you don't hear about those other three names. Even Robert Kennedy who was once in the race, now dropped out of the race, only because, unfortunately, he didn't really stand much of a chance. Probably because the media wasn't even covering him, which was absurd. Because how could a Kennedy not stand a chance? It makes no sense. But just like 100 years ago, when you had Hearst and different ones running publications and so forth, nothing's really changed. It's who has the money. So folks, this is what I will say about the upcoming election and as we approach the next four years. Whoever wins, if we really want to see a change in our country and the way that it's ran, and if we really want to see a change, we will have to make the change. That's it. And it's going to be way more involved and way more technical than, ele than electing a new president. The truth is, and I think most would agree, that our two-party system is horribly, horribly sick. I think that's a good word. It's sick. It's not working. It's not serving its purpose anymore. Each, every four years, we're giving two candidates, and it's, it's becoming more and more embarrassing each election. Um, people that should... It, it's not even about qualifications... It's more so about extremism. With Republicans and Democrats, the platforms are filled with extremism, one way or the other. And it's like, where is the happy medium? Where's that middle of the road where the two parties actually come together and say, oh, Wait a minute, we're being paid to do what's best for the people. So let's do what's best for the people. Oh yeah, we're going to work together. Right. We've got a fractured system that is not serving the purpose anymore of taking care of the American people. If we want this to change, we're going to have to get involved in a massive way. We're going to have to make our voice heard in a massive way to say we're tired of the same old, same old. And we're tired, not of democracy, but this the way this is being ran is absurd. Give me 10 candidates instead of two. 
How hard is that? Let the, you say this is a democracy and let the people decide, but are we really deciding? And also, more importantly, because of the bias and the extremism of the media, are we getting thoroughly educated on the platforms and on the ideals and ideologies and thought processes and, and all these things that are going on with these candidates? And <clears throat> I hear enough to know, I don't really want to vote for either one of them. So I'm I'm down to at this point I'm looking because I'm unaffiliated and I'm proud of that. I've been unaffiliated since I registered. But I, I'm at the point now where I'm having to say okay, here's the two candidates, let's do the pros and cons and see who wins out on the pros. Then even down to parties. Um, I want to look at both parties and say, what's the pros and cons of the parties? Who's winning on the pros? Which way do I vote? Because I don't know which way to vote. And this particular election is really hard for me because there is a woman running for president. Not only a woman, but a woman of color. And that means a lot to me. And it's something that I feel it's it, it's past time for. This should have already happened. Um, but to have a woman and a woman of color, a person that's not white, okay, that's, that's what I'm saying. White people are color, I know. George Carlin made that very clear. We are all colorful in our own way. But... A woman of another ethnicity, something other than white, is running for president, and she's a female. But then, I hear her say stuff that not only do I disagree with, but is downright appalling. Don't even get me started on the other guy, because guess what? Same thing. And, you know, it's funny because I hear them, I hear them both. And I hear them both say good things, and I hear them say bad things. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. They're politicians. <sighs> the fact that politicians have that reputation should tell us something. Listen, we, we, need, we need people running the country like you and me. We need normal everyday people run in this country not people that are lining their pockets not people that are taking our tax dollars and doing whatever they want or they'll <laughs> they'll put it in a ballot as a sneaky little way or a sneaky verbiage or whatever and then all of a sudden oh no but you voted for your tax dollars to do that and most of us didn't even realize it or we weren't educated on it, but we voted that way. If we want this to change, if we want to have viable candidates for the presidency, and if we want to have a government that works, okay, if we want a government that works and if we want viable candidates, we have got to advocate for change. And we've got to do it in a massive, serious, consistent fashion. We have to. That's all there is to it. It sounds simple. I know it's not. I know that I will be fortunate if I even see it in my lifetime. And I'm in my 30s. I will be fortunate if I see it in my lifetime. We deserve to have more than just a two-party system. And more importantly, we deserve to have people in office who care about the American people and our well-being and want to see what is best for us and will work 
their due diligence. They will do their due diligence to make sure that the best decisions are being made for our well-being. And I'm sorry, I don't see that happening. Not a lot. Once in a while, I'll see a glimmer of hope. Once in a while, I will see something where it's like, okay, wow, they actually did something for the American people that makes sense. That's actually a good thing. But other countries are laughing at us. And a lot of Americans are laughing at ourselves at this point. And, and it's almost a hysterical, helpless laugh because it's like, how did this happen? How did we get here? And what in the world are we going to do? So look, I can't tell you how to vote. Um, I don't know how I'm going to vote. But I do like the pros and cons thing. I would say that um, unless you already have picked a side, good for you. But the pros and cons thing, I think, is helpful. Um to do the pros and cons. Um, aside from that, I just feel like if you're like me and want to see change, you're going to have to be willing to advocate somehow, somewhere. Me making this video is my way of advocating, hoping that somebody hears it and goes, oh, Matthew's got a point. We need change because this place sucks. How do we get that change? How do we make these changes? What do we do? Because at the end of the day, that's what we've got to figure out. How do we fix this? How do we make it better? How do we, how do we get our government to a place where it actually works for the people? That's it. So anyway... I, I will encourage you, get out there and vote in November. It's important. Vote, vote, vote. And between now and then, which you don't have long, and neither do I, so I'm taking my own advice here, um, let's make sure that we do our homework. Make sure that we study on who and what. And like I said, the pros and cons, that involves research. What do they believe? What are they fighting for? What are they striving for? Are they going to help our country? And we got to understand, too, this is not just the presidency. One of my friends showed me a mock ballot uh, the other day. And, I mean, pages upon pages upon pages. I forgot how much is on there. You're talking about a bunch of stuff for the state here in North Carolina. So I'm sure your state has a bunch of stuff, too. Um, come on. we got to do our homework, people so that we make a good educated decision come November. But by all means, make sure you get out and vote. Don't just vote to be voting, vote with purpose. Vote with purpose. And after we figure out what's what and who's who and who's running the country, then we really need to get on the ball with making some change in this country and advocating for change. it so god bless america that's all i can say <laughs>